Hey guys, what's up? It's Finch here, and today we are going over the preliminary viability rankings of Generation 9 Overused. That's right, for the first time this generation, we have a viability rankings thread, and all of the Pokemon are ranked in order of how viable they are. I'm going to go ahead and move it over to a tier list, so that gives us a little more of an aesthetically pleasing format for the sake of the video. But for those of you that need a refresher or aren't quite sure what viability rankings are, basically, we're ranking Pokemon in terms of how good they are, how usable they are, how efficient they are in the context of our metagame. So the best Pokemon you're going to see up in S rank, the superb Pokemon in the metagame, or as an A rank, you're going to see really good Pokemon. B rank, you're going to see Pokemon that are just okay. Nothing superb, nothing standout, but they're certainly usable. You can justify them. C rank, we're going to see more niche options, things that, you know, have a distinct reason to be used but maybe that reason only applies a, a smaller portion of the time or maybe only on very specific limited type of team archetypes and then as you go down the list into d rank and so on and so forth you get even more niche even more minimized to the point where eventually you see pokemon that aren't even ranked things that you really can't justify using in the metagame unfortunately that's not saying you shouldn't use those pokemon if they're lower ranked or not ranked at all Quite on the contrary, you should use what you want, even dare to defy the norms that have been set by threads like the viability rankings. These are more so guides to give you a threat list, you know, help you get a feel for the metagame if you're trying to get integrated in a tier, or just to discuss among your friends what's good and what's not good. Really the joy of the viability rankings, in my opinion, are the discourse that surrounds them rather than, oh, we've got to subscribe to the X rankings and Y ideas. Quite on the contrary, I, I feel like pages and pages worth of discussion are put into these threads and are entertained and i think that's really one of the more fun parts of the competitive metagame experience and that's definitely one of the reasons why i love smogon's metagames and enjoy playing them and participating in discussion about them without further ado though since i do host a thread i'm actually going to go ahead and go up through a brief run through of the s through a b rank pokemon i'm not going to go all granular i'm on my lunch hour right now and i don't think that i'll do much justice to some of the pokemon in lower ranks that i haven't quite gotten the chance to use a ton yet but i, I do want to discuss some of the uh the better pokemon more prominent pokemon in metagame and give them some perspective why they're ranked that they are so let's start off with s rank where you see a single pokemon atop the tier shouldn't be very surprising for those of you that have a frequent to the metagame but goldengo is sitting alone in s tier it is without a doubt one of the best pokemon in the metagame it really plays a centralizing role um it's able to preserve hazards with the ability good as gold um coupled with the fact that it also you know makes it rain more or less uh, it's a very strong special attacker it is immune status it can prevent defog and rapid spin just due to its natural typing it has trick nasty plot you know air balloon or choice scarf i've seen choice specs sub with leftovers you know so on and so forth hex sets um it, it really does it all I see it most often as a choice scarf user on hyper offense and as a nasty plot sweeper on bulky offense and balance teams. It pairs so nicely with spike users and also it gives you a steel type in a metagame that is desperately lacking in steel types. While it is more of an offensive presence, it does have respectable natural bulk. Its speed does leave a little bit to be desired, of course, but it still is fast enough to fall a choice scarf set and outrun things like Dragapult, which can go a long way. Moving on to S minus rank, we have some of the best Pokemon in the metagame. All of these, which I would say comprise, you know, top four to five Pokemon in the metagame. Personally, I, I was direct Tusk in A plus and GU and Dragapult in S minus, I believe. But with that said, all of these got enough support from the entire VR council, which is comprised of about uh, nine or ten people. So sometimes it's okay to be outnumbered and have different opinions. Again, I think that's the beauty of uh, of these type of discussions. As for uh, Chi Yu. It is just the strongest, most potent, arguably broken offensive option in the metagame. It is absurdly strong with its dual step combination, which also is great into anything that's not named like Tyranitar or Hydreigon. It has the potential to even break through things like Blissey, which is the most durable special wall that you really commonly see in the metagame. And with Terrestrialization allowed, it's also just able to really bolster that stab as well, making it so that things like Overheat can kill certain water types like Rotom Wash's offensive variants from full health. It's really fun seeing that, truth be told. Yeah, there are some natural checks to it, such as things like Priority, like an E-Normal uh, Dragonite, or uh, Roaring Moon, which can resist the stabs, but overall, Chiyu is one of the most potent breakers in the tier, with be it specs or boots or anything else between i've even seen quite a bit of scarf it's quite good and also you try it out on sun teams where it can particularly thrive if need be 
Dragapult comes in in S minus rank as well. Much like last generation, the choice spec set is absolutely brilliant. We're also seeing choice band sets with things like Terra Blast Ghost, which is always fun. In addition to that, Drag Dance and Hex sets are great too. It provides a premier speed tier, has a lot of nice resistances as well, and offensively speaking, it has all the coverage options and really a wide array of things it can do that it just naturally fits into S minus tier. Great Tusk is next. Many have dubbed this as kind of the Landers T of the early uh, part of SVOU. A Pokemon that's very clearly not broken, but is going to see quite a lot of usage due to the roles it can compress and how healthy and strong a presence it is, both offensively and defensively. It's one of those, you know, kind of focal tanks of the metagame, if you will. And I think the new toy factor is really um, taken away from the fact that it's seeing so much usage and a lot of people get bored by the fact they see so much usage. Landers T definitely got old on certain actions of the user base pretty quickly and great tusk is you know on the same trajectory but it's clearly not seen as an evil a necessary evil more so as just you know a great addition to the metagame and i'm glad it's in that place and i hope it can stay there be it through stealth rock rapid spin or being more of offensively speaking with ice spinner headlong watch or earthquake close combat you know all those options it's great very toolsy pokemon very strong and also durable on the physical side as well and the uh ground plus fighting typing in my opinion is great especially in a tier that is lacking ground types to an extent Moving forward to A-plus rank, uh, really a, a nice array of offensive options as well as a couple of defensively focused Pokemon, or maybe more so utility focused Pokemon, if you will. Offensively speaking, Neil Ape is with Terrestrialization, particularly Terra Water, but I've seen some Terra Dragons, Terra Fairies, and Terra Fire as well. Even Terra Normal, I believe. Um, Neolite is awesome. It's very bulky, durably. It's able to tank hits, and Rage Fist being boosted up from there is such a long way. In my opinion, it's, it's probably... One of, if not the single most potent win condition in the tiers is seeing it rank up high. No shock there. I will note it got some support for the S ranks as well, but it's true that due to the fact that it's slower and revenge killable to some degree, um, you can potentially minimize it, but it's an easier said than done, of course. Uh, Gem Pow, another really threatening uh, physical Pokemon. Very hard to switch into that dual stab, especially considering the fact that its ability basically makes even the bulkiest of walls more average defensively just by dropping that 25% deduction, which really goes such a long way. Overall, Chen Pao is just a really potent offensive force with a great dual stab, even access to something like, say, Sacred Sword, which can really threaten out things um, as Seal types as well, or Tyranitar, for example. Um, Sword Dance is great, Choice Band is great, so on and so forth. You always know, see Ice Shard, Sucker Punch, and the like. It's just a very good Pokemon. Uh, Cyclozar in itself is just really great. Um, with Shed Tail plus Regenerator, it can really take advantage of bulkier teams, you know, and get those free turns, those free substitutes for your more offensive options. It pairs particularly well with Screens from Grimmsnarl, coupled with the most potent wind conditions in the tier, like in Eolite we just mentioned, or Spathra, Dragonite, even Roaring Moon. Overall, Cyclozar is arguably one of the most polarizing supportive Pokemon we've seen in the history of competitive Pokemon. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with Shed Tail and Cyclozar moving forward, but for now, it'll settle firmly into the higher half of A plus rank. Actually, not really the higher half. These are done alphabetically. But uh, yeah, I digress. Uh, Dragonite has been a really awesome beneficiary of Trastalization in the metagame. Coupled with the fact that it gained heavy duty boots last generation, we've really seen a bit of a revitalization of its uh, viability in the competitive landscape, which is quite a long way. You know, boots, the lack of hidden power, Trastalization, um, some new toys last generation move wise as well. You know, it goes such a long way. Unfortunately, we don't see dual wing beat in the game. But we still see boots and terrestrialization, particularly with Terra Normal and Extreme Speed, makes it kind of the modern day uh, OU viable extreme killer. For those of you who don't know, that's uh, Arceus Normal clicking Sword Dance into Extreme Speed off of its stab, very strong. And with Dragonite, you can kind of simulate that more so with uh, Dragon Dance. You got coverage moves such as Earthquake or Fire Puncher, or even go with the stab uh, Dragon Claw if you want to, you know, clock more, um, more Pokemon that you need coverage for. But in terms of, you know, boosted extreme speed, it really goes a long way. I think it's a great option on offensive teams. It's a good revenge killer while being wind condition and that multi-purpose nature of it, coupled with the fact that it has a nice slew of resistances, goes a long way towards, you know, solidifying Dragonite's viability. Aspothra is an absolute demon. The, uh, the turkey sweeps everyone with Terra Fairy or even Terra Fighting. There's really not much more to put it. Stored power with Protect, Speed Boost, Come Mind goes a long way. And suddenly, if, oh, I'm going to get Sucker Punch. Just kidding. I'm a Fairy type or I'm a Fighting type now. And then you clock the Dark type. It's just really a, 
A really problematic development. I don't love uh, Espathra in a translation metagame. Obviously, things could change in the future for it or the metagame, though, so we'll see. Iron Valiant is just your prototypical, very strong attacker. We've seen physical, we've seen special. I really love its versatility. It's built in set mix that just naturally can kind of complement itself, make it very hard to switch into. Definitely bring some pause towards immediate counterplay as well. While there is some pivoting here and there with it, and it's not maybe the best user of Trastalization that you'll ever see, it certainly can make use of it and is innate breaking ability ability easily leaves it within the realm of A+. Speaking of innate breaking ability, Roaring Moon has been one of the fan favorites this generation, be it through the initial exploit of Terra Fighting, Fight Flying with Acrobatics Boost as well, or going to more novel strategies such as Terra Steel or even Terra Dark, be it with a Choice Band or with a Dragon Dance set or even more of a Pivot set. Warring Moon has really become a staple in the metagame, one of the best Pokemon in the tier due to its speed and strength, coupled with the fact that it plays really nicely off a couple of new mechanics that everyone wants to try out. King Gambit has been one of the other favorite Dark types in the metagame. It's super strong much like Roaring Moon in Chen Pao. However, it has a bit more natural durability thanks to its nice base stats as well as the steel typing. Also, Supreme Overlord makes it a very menacing Pokemon later in the game. You could also bolster this by potentially terrestrializing the dark type or terrestrializing to a flying type for things like say, Great Tusk, which can hit super effectively with ground or fighting, but suddenly you resist those and you get a kind of a free turn. Also leaves you immune to Earthquake and resistant to things like Body Press from Gargano. Next up, we got Ting Lu, really the overall tank god of the metagame. It's got Hazard, it's got Earthquake, you know, it hits strong, but also it's so vertically bulky. Maxing out special defense helps it really take down things like Chi Yu, Dragapult, Goldengo, which are some of the best Pokemon metagame. Couple this with the fact that it really shrugs off even some super effective hits and it is very, very hard to one shot while it hits pretty hard itself. Goes such a long way towards solidifying it as one of the better Pokemon in the metagame and a very, uh, very strong but bulky option. It has access to hazards and phasing as well, just making it a very toolsy pick. Moving down the list in A, we've got Corviknight, Dondozo, Garganokle, Lamora, um, Grimmsnarl, and Iron Treads. We're not going to spend as much time the more we go down the list, but I do want to give you guys a brief uh, look into why these Pokemon are viable. Corviknight is one of the few steel types we see. I believe it's actually the third rank steel type, but it's the first defensively oriented one, and I think that alone just solidifies its viability, coupled with the fact that you see above it, there's only one Pokemon that is immune to Earthquake, and it is really the second one. So I don't think Corviknight's actually the best Pokemon, maybe a hot take. I, I think it actually kind of lags behind the Pokemon ranked in its company in terms of like niche and viability, but the fact that it fulfills such a limited role makes it fit onto so many teams, and sometimes usage has a slight correlation to viability, so this is one instance of that. Speaking of that, if you need kind of a blanket check the physical setup, Dondozo is your guy, while Hazards really ruin it, coupled with the fact that it's rest reliant. You notice now we're starting to kind of get into some flaws to Pokemon, and while they have these awesome qualities, they also have drawbacks. And that's kind of the further you get to the list, the more pushback you'll see, but these are still great Pokemon in Aaronic, and Dondozo is that. It still hits decently hard, um, coupled with the fact that there's access to things like Curse, and with the right support, it can really go a long way. Obviously, it wishes Heal Bell was in the game. You know, it definitely wishes it could do a bit more in terms of avoiding passivity and reliance on rest, but that aside, it's still a good option. Gargonacle, um, impossible to status, great abuser of trustalization to, you know, avoid that uh, typing issue. Salt, salt Cure is just such an awesome ability, coupled with the fact it can kind of grind you out, you know, between its signature move, coupled with the fact that it's got the uh, iron uh, defense and body press type of routine. It's just really an underrated bulky win condition. I actually personally put it in A plus right now, the more I think about it. I think in the metagame meta metagame especially, it arguably is even broken. It's just so hard to kill and it really bolsters defensive teams. And even from function on hyper offense, it's kind of like a surprise win condition as well. I've also seen some utility sets, but I'm not too fond of those. I, I, I think that you gotta really want to try and use the win condition sets on Garganocle and it's just one of the best Pokemon in the metagame. Glamora. Um, Hype has died down a tad for it, but honestly, it still continues to be a fantastic option in the metagame. Mortal Spin and, uh, and, and Toxic Debris is such awesome, you know, spreading poison, controlling the field. Coupled with the fact that we've seen more of an outcry of offensive sets, Energy Ball for Great Tusk, Dazzling Gleam for Roaring Moon, coupled with the fact that it's got Earth Power for Goldango, you know, these type of coverage options are great. And then Sludge Bomb, um, also an all great stab, or sorry, Sludge, Sludge, so yeah, Sludge Bomb, it's gonna Sludge Blade if I was thinking Sludge Bomb, no. Um, you know, it's got access to Stealth Rock, it's got access to all the hazards, Mortal Spin, it's just a really great toolsy Pokemon that you see early in the game, and now you've been seeing more so on, like, Choice Scarf sets and kind of lore offensively oriented sets, which I, I think really kind of carves it into a more distinct versatile niche, which can solidify it is a rank i do admit it doesn't have the best defensive profile it is not the easiest to fit onto teams especially non-offensive ones but 
it, it certainly pays a large dividend when you can fit it. Next up, we have Grimmsnarl. Grimmsnarl is just there for screens and hyper offense. It's the poster child of hyper offense right now, and that's all it needs to set. Iron Treads is next up. It is all great steel type option, ground. It has some nice attack. It also can compress roll, stealth, rock, rapid spin. Been seeing a lot as lead, and even offensively, it's decent as well. It's definitely a well ways behind Great Tusk in terms of viability, but it's still a really good option. Moving into A minus tier, we have Amoongus. Um, the uh, ground quagsire, uh, Claude Sire, Claude Sire. Oh my god, I blanked. <laughs> uh, Garchomp, Hatterene, Iron Moth, Rotom Wash, Skeldridge, Skeldridge, and um, Volcarona. Amoongus has been great since day one. Even without Palafin, it's still nice. Uh, against Spore, you know, foul play, uh, Sludge Bomb, the like, uh, Synthesis if need be, Terran to Water to resist certain things and inflict status. It's just really a nice regenerator option. Cloud Zire, Hazards, an awesome special bull, couple with Unaware, goes such a long way. Garchomp, kind of tough because it's like really hazard oriented. It got spikes for those you don't know. Swords is probably some niche, but we're really seeing it more of a limited hazard role. It is great at that. It provides you with a ground type in a metagame that's rare. It has a nice speed tier, outrunning base on hundreds and lower, but it's still pretty limited. So, you know, what was historically Garchomp is like an A plus Pokemon. We might see it get up there eventually. It's not quite there yet. Hatterene has been awesome in such a spikes infested metagame. It's got nice coverage, it has extra nuzzle, combine, terra sets are actually pretty hard to take out as well, and its ability magic bounce goes such a long way. Iron Moth has kind of been this in the middle Pokemon for a while now. It does a cool offensive presence, couple with great utility options, but admittedly, it also is pretty limited. But I love its speed tier, and I think it's going to grow to be an OU staple. I'm glad that it's seen enough usage and viability to be an A minus right now. It's kind of been all over the place, though. So I'm curious to see how it settles, as I think it's one of those Pokemon that still is needing to be more explored with. Rotom Wash, Scale Ridge, two utility oriented Pokemon. Rotom Wash, lost access to Pain Split, lost access to Defog, but, you know, just Wisp, Volt Switch, Hydro Pump Protect is great in this metagame, especially given the limited decks and how many crucial resistance it has and how great Volt Switch is without ground types. Whereas Scale Ridge, especially with Terra Ferry or even Terra Flying, um, even I've seen Terra Normal on it as well, is just a great unaware Pokemon. Um, Wisp Hex shenanigans, Torch Song to boost special attack. It kind of can provide a surprise pseudo offensive presence while also being a great defensive option as well. And finally, Volcarona, you know, just a trust position, Quiver Dance Sweeper, a metagame without Heatran, no surprising that it's pretty effective. While things like Dragonite and Priority in general are great into it and it's possible to revenge kill, it certainly is one of the more potent offensive options. The B ranks, uh, Baxcalibur, a great Dragon Dance Sweeper, very strong, but also definitely got some weaknesses and maybe a little reliant on Terrestrialization. Some opportunity cost. Breloom, a darling of early days, has definitely sinked a little bit in viability, but it's still a very good option. Technician choice band sets are great. Close combat can really clock things as well. It goes such a long way towards solidifying it as one of the underrated powerhouses in the metagame. Certainly a deserving spot in B+. Iron Hands is, you know, another great one. Sword Stance with um, with screens is particularly great. It's really hard to take out, and it's also quite strong, so definitely one of the harder Pokemon to switch into and prepare for. Quackle Ball, it's got a nice Moxie setup. Um, with step up and all that, but truth be told, it is still pretty limited. It's still stab, you know, it does leave susceptible to some Pokemon that we will not be nimming. <laughs> Toxpex, oops. Um, and also, it, it lacks that one shot power that maybe some other things wish it could have, but it's still definitely a very viable Pokemon. Scizor did lose some tools, but also is still great with a steel type in this metagame and strong priority, fitting the offensive profile kind of as an anti metagame option, but it is decreasing a little bit in viability. People become more and more prepared for it and start using things like Goldengo, King Gambit, more so in their steel stops. Torkoal is great because Sun is great. Slowking, really cool, underrated option in my eyes, rounding out B+. Terra Water actually removes the Psychic Stab and makes it check things like Chi Yu, Goldengo, Dragon which happen to be the three best Pokemon in the metagame, coupled with the fact that they bolster Surf. And Chill Reception is kind of like a pseudo-teleport, which works nicely with Future Sight as well. So I really like how Slowking is kind of carved out an interesting niche in the metagame. I'm curious to see how that will continue. Um, We'll go through the B Pokemon and we'll call it, yeah. Azumarill. It's just, you know, hits hard with the stabs, Bell Drummer, pretty good on hyper offense. Blissey, um, losing heal bell stunk for it for sure, but it's still, you know, a sponge in a metagame where the three best Pokemon are strong special attackers, two of them are ghosts, it's not shocking. Ditto is a nice anti setup option. You know, Scarda, also new toy factor, but protein, while it admittedly is diminished, still is nice. It is pretty fast as well, and the dark type can make some handy, so kind of a nice class cannon. Palmont, revival blessing moment? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I don't know. I mean, it, it's good. It's got a niche and a hyper offense, you know, on, on right team, but it's also pretty limited. Tox Specs is B rank. Yeah, that's all that needs to be said. And Tyranitar, to round things out for the video, is the setter of sand. 
Um, that's not Hippowdon, which would be minus strength, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's still an awesome, nice niche. Uh, checks Chiyu and Ghost types, which is awesome. Anyway, guys, these are kind of the top 20, 30 Pokemon in OU. Um, you can see the full vibe. You're looking, I'll link it down below. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on what's good, what's not so good in the metagame. And thank you so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed, and have a great day. All right. Later, guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, oh, I'm trying to get more of these videos up, but we got even bigger news coming later this week. So stay tuned for that. A lot of SSOU content on the horizon. I'm very excited for what's to come. And I'm sure those of you that follow me on Twitter or keep up with the Smilegon forums know what is on the horizon. So yeah. All right. Like, comment, subscribe. Later, guys. Peace.